this is the recording to determine the densities of the regular shaped and irregular shaped specimens that were used in the example that I videotaped and so let me input the data at the very beginning of the video I made a mistake and when I talked about what kind of specimen I was using and instead of taping it again I figured oh I'm just gonna use it as a teaching lesson later on to talk about experimental error and systematic error so I'll get back to it later at this point I'm just gonna input the data so I measured the cube as 2.53 centimeters all the way through We have an absolute error of 0 0.005 centimeters, and that is take the last decimal here. I can only measure 2.53, 2.54, 2.52 2 with the caliper that I used, and then half of that difference from each of these is the absolute error. So I go half of 0 0.01, which is 0 0.005. I cannot be any more accurate than that and that's what I'm gonna put in here. I'm gonna calculate the percentage error in just a moment. The mass was measured as 139 grams with an error of again half of the last possible digit. So half of a gram is 0.5 grams. That gives me percentage errors of point zero zero five divided by two point five three oops point zero zero five divided by two point five three okay and that here because it's percentage shift the decimal point twice so it's point two percent rounded I'm not gonna write down point one point I'm sorry, I'm not going to write down 0.197%, I'm going to write down 0.2%. And for the mass, that is 0.5 grams divided by 139 grams, and that would be then around at 0.4%. So 0.2 for these three. and 0.4 for this one. Okay, Then the density is calculated according to this formula and of course the volume is length times width time, times height. So I multiply these three that gives me the volume and then I divide it into the mass and that gives me the density. So let's see, 2.53, and then I have the luxury of saying to the third power. So 16.2 cubic centimeters. There's no space to write this down because I just want you to write down the density once you're done. So it's 139 grams divided by that result and that is 8.58 and here I ask you write down the result for the density as it appears on the calculator let's see with a footnote which says this should exemplify that calculated results need to be rounded to an appropriate number of significant figures because the unnecessary figures have no meaning and create visual confusion as you're gonna see it in just a moment when I write this down 8.58 Three, two, seven, nine, one, four, two. That's what my calculator had. Totally, o total overkill. And in order to make a meaningful number out of it, it has to be truncated at some point. That's where significant figures come in. Where exactly to do it? Where to um, cut it off? Well, that's where it's helpful to look at the original data. This one is accurate to three significant figures. Three, three, 
three that makes it easy to determine that the computed result needs to be three significant figures as well right there 8.58 Okay, the absolute error and the percentage error for that result have to be determined as follows. Unfortunately, for determining a percentage error, it's a little inconvenient. It's in the addendum of this lab report, lab menu. You're going to do the following. Take the square root of each percentage error squared. So it's quite a bit of typing. I don't think too bad. So those are the three percentage errors for the length, width, and height. And then the percentage error for the mass. Either way, either do it the square this way or that way and then take the square root of the sum again what I just did here is in the addendum as well hit enter and I come up with a rounded 0.5 percent okay and that in turn that 0.5 percent which is as a decimal point zero zero five multiplies with the result of eight point five eight and that gives me the absolute error of point zero four two nine this should be truncated after the four because that's the last decimal for the computed result in the hundredth so point zero four grams per cubic centimeter okay I'm gonna write this in the conclusion here's what I would write my result of 8.58 grams per cubic centimeters for and originally I had mentioned in the video copper compares to and this is where the teaching moment will come up in a moment compares to the accepted or theoretical value of 8.94 grams per cubic centimeter. Now since my error was only 0 0.04 so I have 8.58 plus 0 0.04 for the density but it should be 8.94 and you saw the specimen in the video then I would say that my result should not be acceptable it's just too far off it's about 4% off rather than 0.4% from the accuracy I used the caliper I tried to measure to the closest gram and it shouldn't be that far off so I for my error I would say my measurements contain the following errors so I want too many R's there there we go caliper point zero zero five centimeters the balance point five grams And these are, I'm sorry, random errors. 
and then I would have to look at actually zeroing the, the balance and I think I did that at the very beginning I'm gonna write it down anyway tear or zero the balance which if that wasn't done that would become a systematic error or if I had used a measuring tape then I could say well if I didn't align it exactly with the zero then I also would have a systematic error um, in this case I did it pretty well I believe except my result was quite off so I went back and I looked at the cube again and noticed that whoa that certainly didn't have the reddish color of copper and I found out what my mistake was I took it out of the box and it had the wrong label underneath it said copper and it was brass actually and then I just I guess the lighting in the lab that I used wasn't all that great and I didn't pay close attention to it anymore I just wanted to videotape so here is it is supposed to be brass and the teaching moment is that I get a result that is too far off from what it should be the result didn't satisfy me and I figure out something must have gone wrong and I try to fix that so it was an experimental error that resulted in a systematic error and so here I'm fixing it and it's supposed to be brass and I looked up the density for brass I think you can read it here it says 8.4 to 8.73 grams and the reason why it's there is a certain range is that brass is a an alloy of copper and zinc mostly and so the properties of brass can change the density of brass is in this range here 8.4 to 8.73 so compares to the accepted value of 8.4 to 8.73 grams per cubic centimeter and actually if I look at this here I pick that out from um, Wikipedia I would say actually they should have put another zero here because if this one is given to three significant figures this one here should also be given to three significant figures so I'm gonna put that in there and then you can see that well actually I did measure accurately and my, my result is smack in the middle of where it should be so again I kept that initial mistake of misidentifying the specimen in there to show you that when something goes wrong here's a way in this case to, um, to fix it in this case looking at that oh I used a different specimen next we're gonna look at the irregular shaped specimen and those were those steel screws oh and I should actually say that here Let's see where was it again there this was brass and that was the 8.4 to 8.40 to 8.73 grams per cubic centimeter okay now let's do the irregular shaped specimen so these were these steel screws and the published value for steel is between 7.75 and 8.05 grams per cubic centimeter again that's also an alloy okay the mass measurement for those steel screws was 173 grams with an absolute error of 0.5 grams because I used the balance the immersed or effective mass 
was 145 grams and that was the effective mass and on the scale that I use the spring scale I can I can only kind of see in the middle between two lines which is between 140 and 150 that's where it measured as it was immersed and I measured the effective mass of that which of course is smaller because the buoyancy took so to say took weight away and so it was in between 140 and 150 and I said that's 145 and then I would have to say you know that could be still about with half of that error with half of the five which around at three so that's how I came up with an error of three grams then again determine the percentage errors it's going to be 0.5 divided by 173 so that's 0.3 percent and the other one is 3 divided by 145 and that's gonna be 2 percent so 0.3 percent and I just say 2 percent yep 2 percent and then I do the calculation here I will have to go all the way back to the theory which is here this one here I didn't do that's immersing the mass with water on top of the scale or balance here this is the one I did do where I had an extra bucket or beaker where the water was in and the specimen was hanging on a thread on that spring scale and that's how I measured it and the formula for that one is this one here mass divide by mass minus the effective mass so keep that in mind as I'm gonna do the calculation here So that's going to be 173 divided by 173 minus 145, parentheses, 6.1785. 6 one four two nine okay now I have to see here well how many of these should I use well technically I should use three significant figures because this one is three and this one is three I'm gonna write down here for now six point one eight and then the percentage error again is that formula that you find in the addendum that says square root of take the first one the point three percent and square that plus the other one two percent square that parentheses enter and actually the percentage error remains at as two percent I could write a two point zero percent I guess and then I take that two percent change it to a decimal point zero zero no I'm sorry not point zero two and multiply that with the computer result of six point one eight and that gives me an error of plus minus point one two point one two is the absolute error Earlier I was a little bit hesitant to give it three significant figures. The reason is that in this calculation here I actually divide by 828. I think you can see that which is actually two significant figures. So in this case here I'm just going to leave it at three because those are the original data and if you give me one more significant figure then 
necessary than would be required that's gonna be okay with me um, just don't give me all eight of them because this is just junk here I think there are ten listed here so look at the data that you have and that determines the significant figures and as I said if you give me one more then alright that's okay with me okay when I look at the result here 6.18 that is that one it really is quite a ways off from 7.75 for that one I don't have a nifty explanation like I did for the other one and so here I just come up with that well my error on the second one was pretty large and if you look at the calculation if this one here was not a 145 but it was a 148 instead then you can see that this one here changes drastically 6.9 compared to 6.1 still a little bit off or I'm still quite a bit off um, but the error here actually is also relatively large I know it's at 2% but of the difference here it might be uh, actually larger than that and then again it also could be an alloy that is not the in the original range or typical range so this one here gave me a larger error and it's a little bit unfortunate that for this particular one I couldn't come up with a better result so I hope that for your data you're gonna come up with some better ones than what I had at least my first one here for the brass was right on once I had fixed it from copper to brass but this one yeah what I say now here how much was that 7.75 to 8.05 that's quite a bit off and my measurements were following were as follows contain the following errors the, uh, I didn't use a caliper I used the balance and then I used the spring scale and that one was about three grams those are random errors tearing or zeroing the balance respectively the scale not that means not tearing them not zeroing them would be a systematic error then it's an alloy oh that's what I should say for the other one as well which is also a systematic error so here I could comment that's that measurement is right on and here I would have to say that that measurement is quite a bit off and I mean maybe the explanation is that I thought I was using steel screws and I didn't respectively that yeah my errors here actually were rather large this one here should go up there and that could definitely have something to do with that